Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Taylor Talks Tales. Today I have a video for you. It's my August TBR slash book haul combo video. There are quite a few books that I'm going to be sharing with you. Some are books that I've purchased and some are library books that I've checked out because I'm super excited that my local library is doing curbside pickup now. I was so excited the day that they started doing it again and I immediately rushed out, put 50 books on hold and they're slowly coming in. So I'm actually probably going to be doing a couple library hauls coming up because I'm trying to maximize the amount of books that I'm checking out right now because who knows what's going to happen in the fall. I'm a little nervous with how things are going that we're going to go back to phase one in this state and phase one means that the libraries are just shut not doing curbside pickup. So I figure I can check out 100 books at a time so I'm going to do that. And between you and me, a secret thing is that my brother sometimes lets me use his library card, so I may be able to check out a few books with his account, with his permission. So, we'll see. I just want to make sure I have a lot of books on hand, just in case something weird happens in the fall. And especially with me losing my job, I'm going to be a little more selective about the books that I purchase. So, so I just want to suck up. Let's get into the video because I don't want to be too long, but again, there's about 20-ish books I'm about to share with you. I'm hoping to get through as many of these this month as possible, but we'll have to see how the rest of the month goes. I'm currently working on The Dark Tower and almost done with the binge and can't wait to upload my video with the review of the whole series. So I'm working on those as kind of part of my TBR, but let's get into the books for the haul. The first two books I'm going to share with you, I recently purchased at a bookstore on San Juan Island. I went on a trip the last couple of days. That's one of the reasons why this video is getting uploaded a little bit later than I wanted it to. Normally I try to have my TBR a little sooner in the month, but I didn't get a chance to work on this before then. So the two books that I purchased at this little bookstore on San Juan Island in Friday Harbor, it was a very cute little bookshop and it's actually the first bookstore I've been in pretty much since March when all of the lockdown started happening. I've been to Half Price Books a couple of times, but the first this is the first bookstore that I've been in um, that wasn't a used bookstore in a long time. So, first book I picked up was Mexican Gothic by Silvio Moreno-Garcia. Really excited about this book. I've heard great things about it, especially if you like gothic fiction, which I do. I consider gothic fiction up there with sort of genres that I enjoy because I know like gothic fiction is kind of it's in a way its own sort of subgenre of horror and I love a good atmospheric read and this one sounds really interesting. So this one we are following a young woman named Noemi and she gets a mysterious letter from her sister who is just very worried and thinks that she is going to be killed. She's worried that her new husband is trying to kill her and so Noemi goes to help her sister out and figure out what's going on. So she goes to this estate that's in Mexico and then weird things start to happen. It's very, very gothic. Like you can just read the inside flap and you just know that there's like um, a younger brother who may have secrets of his own, an older man who is kind of sketchy, and then the mysterious husband and the sister, and it's set in a manor house in the Mexico countryside, so I just think it's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Heard great things, and I picked this up because I originally put this book on hold at my library, and there are like 30 people ahead of me, and it was still in order, and I'm like, I want to read it sooner, so I picked this one up at the bookstore, so I don't have to wait. The other book I picked up, I'm only going to briefly talk about because I don't know if anyone on this channel would be super interested in this book. I'm interested, but it's because it ties into an interest of mine. It's The Curve of Time, the 50th Anniversary Edition by M. Wiley Blanchett. This book follows a woman. She ends up being widowed, and she takes her five kids and just sails the coast of British Columbia. And it's about their experience doing that. They do it for 15 summers, and it's just about family and grief and just exploring the coast of British Columbia, which British Columbia coast does come down into Washington state and kind of like the San Juan Islands area. So for me, this is an area that means a lot to me. 
and I can just already, I've already read a couple parts of this and the sense of place is just really my home in a way. Like I don't live on the coast, but I travel and visit the coast a lot. And even though it's British Columbia, not Washington, it's the the ocean and the seas and just the wildlife is going to be very similar to like the St. Juan's and the Puget Sound area, which I've explored a lot of. So, and because I enjoy sailing, not a interest that I've really talked about on this channel because it's not super relevant to books, but I think as somebody who likes to sail and explore this area, it, it interests me. And I hadn't heard of this book until I went to that bookstore, so I figured I would pick this up and give it a shot and see what it's like. This next book I'm about to share with you is my most anticipated read for the month of August. I have been wanting to read this book since like October or November of last year. It's been on my radar ever since and I just, I pre-ordered this book, came in the mail, and it's been really hard not digging into it, but I'm forcing myself to read it this month. I want to finish The Dark Tower first before I read this book, but it's really hard because I just really want to just dive into the story. And that is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. I'm going to read the inside flap for you because it just summarizes it perfectly. It's very just succinct and gets to the point without spoiling anything. Seamlessly blending classic horror and a dramatic narrative with sharp social commentary, The Only Good Indians follows four American Indian men after a disturbing event from their youth puts them in a desperate struggle for their lives. Tracked by an entity bent on retribution, these childhood friends are helpless as the culture and traditions they left behind catch up to them in a violent, vengeful way. I am so excited for this book. I have read other works by Stephen Graham Jones, Mongrels, after the People Lights have gone off, and several of his other short story collections. They were very well done. I think he has a very unique voice and a unique perspective that he puts into his writing, and it's just very enjoyable, good horror. And I remember reading one of the author blurbs, and he talks about how he likes werewolf films and horror, so that's always awesome. And what's really going to be powerful about this story is that this is an own voices book. Sam Graham Jones is Native American and I think he's really going to be able to bring that perspective and that kind of heart and soul and his his struggles and his views and he's going to be able to put this in this story. I think he's going to make it very personal and I love when that happens in books. I enjoy reading books from all walks of life, from all different religions, races, cultures, ethnicities, genders, you name it, I think that everybody has something unique that they can bring to stories, specifically horror. Um, I mean, I'll read anything by anybody if it's in the horror genre, and I think that, especially when it's own voices, it just makes it that much more powerful. So this is definitely my most anticipated read for the month of August, and who knows, maybe I might actually put Dark Tower on pause to get to this. Try not to, because I am really enjoying the Dark Tower series. It's been just a very fun ride, but this book is just so tempting. It's like just calling to me, so I don't know. I don't know if I can wait much longer before I dig into this. We'll have to see. Next book is Mallory by Josh Mallerman. This is the sequel to Bird Box, which, if you don't know, I happen to really enjoy Bird Box a lot. I think it's a very solid, spooky, apocalyptic horror book definitely creeped me out the first time I ever read it, and the movie did not do the book justice at all. So if you've only seen the Bird Box movie, I highly suggest reading the book. The book is so much better. Just, you can't really even compare the two. They're just so different, and I really prefer the book over the movie. I am a little nervous going into this book, to be completely honest, because even though I love Bird Box, and I, I'm excited to read this, but also sequels and I don't always get along. I tend to like sequels if they're like part of a planned series, but if they are just kind of like written like 10 years after the first book, it wasn't originally part of a series, the book was supposed to be a standalone, and then they, the author ends up writing the a companion novel or the sequel later. 
it seems like I don't have a lot of good experiences with that. So I'm excited, but I'm a little nervous about this. This is pretty much a follow-up to Bird Box, and I'm not actually going to tell you the summary about this because it is a sequel, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't checked out Bird Box, but pretty much this is a continuation of the story from the first book. The next three books I'm going to share with you are middle grade books. So I haven't really done a lot on middle grade on this channel, but all three of these are books that I find to be very interesting, and I'm looking forward to it because I do read some middle grade. Um, even as an adult, I think if you find the right middle grade, it can be a very enjoyable experience. They tend to be very fast-paced and very quick reads for me, so I'm looking forward to these. First book is The Absence of Sparrows by Kurt Kirchmeier. Kurt sent this to me, and I'm really excited because I've had a couple authors send me some books for review, um, but I haven't had a middle grade author send this to me, and I'm just very excited to be reviewing this book because I don't think anyone's really talked about it on YouTube yet, and I don't know much about the book. I haven't checked out any reviews because I want to just go into it fairly blind, and I want to be sort of unbiased and objective as possible. So this book sounds really just right up my alley because it has, it's kind of like a horror story, but there's also like an apocalyptic pandemic outbreak aspect to it. I'm going to read the back because I think it summarizes it perfectly. The glass plague is unstoppable. Not much happens in the small town of Graver's Mill, where 11-year-old Ben Cameron spends his time birdwatching and hanging out with his family. But everything goes wrong when a sinister darkness fills the sky, and people begin to change. Humans one minute, glass statues the next. There's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, and no one knows how to stop it. Ben is certain that the glass plague's victims can't be gone forever, and that a missing flock of sparrows holds the key to bring one important statue back. But will the birds return before it's too late? And will Ben have the courage to stand against his own brother in order to keep the glass from shattering? Debut author Kurt Kirchmeier explores mystery, sorrow, and the power of hope in this unique and poignant coming-of-age story. So, got a lot of awesome elements in this book. Especially appreciate a coming-of-age element, and it sounds kind of spooky with like a sci-fi element. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I can't wait to get to this book. The next middle grade book I want to share with you is Malamander by Thomas Taylor, which just look at this really neat cover. So this book, I think it's going to be part of a series. So I think it's the first book in a series. I think the second one is coming out fairly soon, but this one I'm really excited for because I, it's going to be a middle grade creature feature that's set on the coast of, I believe, what's supposed to be England um, in this town called Erie on Sea. And there's this mystery at the heart of this that may involve the creature known as the Malamander. There's a girl named Violet who is trying to investigate the disappearance of her parents. And she teams up with, I think, I think his name is Herbie. Yeah, Herbie. So they, there's these two kids who are going to try to solve the mystery of what this creature might be and mysterious disappearances. And I just think... It already sounds really fascinating, and there's also a lot of, uh, there's like a map at the beginning, and then there's just like, like each chapter has a really neat little tentacle thing. And of course, I like the art. There's a little, some drawings, and I just think it already looks like a very well put together book. And I think it's going to be one of those atmospheric stories set along the coast of England. So it's going to be just probably this like foggy coastal story taking place in a small town. And of course, mysterious disappearances and a monstrous creature that we don't know too much about. And plucky kids trying to solve what's happening. I think that just sounds really fun. So... I can't wait to get to this one, and if it's good, then I'll be checking out the rest of the series once it comes out. The last of the middle grade stories is Dog Driven by Terry Lynn Johnson. Terry Lynn Johnson is the author of one of my favorite middle grades that I've read as an adult, which is Ice Dogs. I'll post a little snapshot of what the book cover looks like right here. So Dog Driven 
I'm looking forward to this one because, again, Ice Dogs was just a fantastic experience. It's a really powerful survival story that's middle grade, but it doesn't really feel like middle grade. Like, middle grade readers, of course, will enjoy it, but you can enjoy it as an adult reader. I thought it was wonderful. I've read it several times. Didn't realize that the author was coming out with a new book. This actually came out last year, but I finally picked it up. This story follows our main character. She is starting to go blind. She has this very rare eye genetic disease that's causing her vision to deteriorate. So at some point, very soon, she's going to be completely blind and she wants to race her dogs because um, she lives up in Alaska and she participates in dog sled races. And at some point, she decides to go out and try to enter a race and she has to go into the race and deal with that and there's a survival aspect to it but she also has to deal with her fading vision and I think that's really neat and um I believe there's like a oh yeah it's the Stargardt so it's Stargardt disease and in fact even the uh the beginning part like mentions that so that'll be really interesting um there's also like a a map I always like books with maps I think they're really neat and I think it's just going to be a nice, solid, fun, enjoyable read. And if it's anything like Ice Dogs, I know I'm going to be in for a very good time. Next up, we have Fear of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. This book, which I just want to say, this cover is really nice. It looks very atmospheric, and I love the trees, and just, I think it looks really nice. This book I've heard... It's kind of like The Handmaid's Tale, but mixed with like an occult, paranormal, witchy element to it. So our main character, Emmanuel, she lives in this very almost puritanical society where like witchcraft, magic, just you, you don't do it, it's evil, it's frowned upon, it's awful. And at some point though, she discovers that she has magical abilities. So it's about her dealing with that in this really repressive awful society where it sucks that she's a woman because they're also very patriarchal and she also is mixed race which is in this society it's like oh no so there's like a couple things working against her and it's about her dealing with that but I think there's also supposed to be a very like spooky element to this so it's not just like the handmaid's tale but instead it's going to be like darker and there's probably I mean, there's more of a horror aspect to it because it's you know listed under the horror category so i think there's going to be a much darker element to this than like the handmaid's tale which is already a really dark story by the way um like it's dystopia sci-fi but really it can be a, a horror story in a way um so i'm looking forward to this i think it's gonna be great and I'm kind of hoping so I read the grace year earlier this year and I kind of feel like the grace year let me down a little bit and I'm kind of wondering if reading maybe what could be almost like an adult version of it um because I'm getting kind of similar vibes to it but I think this will I think this will be a better story I think because it's written for adults and it just I've heard some really good things about it and I've had this on my radar for quite some time so interested to see what this ends up being like. Another book to share with you is The Gone World by Tom Switterlish. This one I picked up because I loved Recursion and I really like Dark Matter. So I tend to like a lot of like Crouch's work. Like his Pines trilogy was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. And this story just reminded me a lot of like a Blake Crouch story. I haven't read it yet, of course, but like the blurb just sounded a lot like it. And it appeared on a couple of lists that had Dark Matter and Recursion on it. And also, too, Blake Crouch, I mean, you can't really see very well because the uh, barcode is covering it, the library barcode, but it's blurbed by Blake Crouch. So this one, it follows a detective and she is trying to solve a mystery of this missing Navy SEALs family getting murdered and then the teenage daughter was taken and time travel exists in this world but it's a very complicated system and pretty quickly when this detective goes into the future and explores alternate futures to 
see if she can solve what happened and why and how the Navy SEAL, who's also an astronaut, he's a missing astronaut, how that connects into everything. And there's supposed to be like a post-apocalyptic or like some kind of apocalyptic element to it because it even says, um, to her horror, the future reveals that much more than the fate of a family hinges on her work, what she witnesses rising over time's horizon and hurtling toward the present is the terminus, the terrifying and cataclysmic end of humanity itself. So, that sounds awesome. Can't wait to get to this, and I've been in the mood for some kind of gripping combination of science fiction and thriller, and I think this is going to scratch that itch. So, can't wait to get to this one. Next up, I have two young adult thriller novels. First up is I Killed Zoe Spanos by Kit Frick and The Last Confession of Autumn Casterly by Meredith Tate, which I just want to say this book, I really like the uh, sprayed edges. I just think it looks really neat. I haven't ever seen a book with blue sprayed edges before. They usually go like black or red or something. Um, this book, it follows a couple different characters from what I've gathered from the blurb is that there is one girl named Anna and she arrives into town and she falls into like the wrong crowd and a lot of people kind of have their suspicions about her especially because she arrives in town right around the same time that Zoe Spanos disappears. Then a few months later Zoe is found murdered and people think Anna did it and then it goes but kind of back and forth about did she or didn't she do it. At the same time, there is a woman, I think her name, Martina. I was about to say Meredith for some reason. <laughs> That's not right. Martina has a podcast and she starts looking into this because Anna had confessed that she killed Zoe and Anna's story doesn't add up and so Martina thinks there's something else going on. She starts to explore it and then the story goes from there, which I think is really cool. I listen to several different true crime podcasts. I think this sounds a little bit like um, Sadie by Courtney Summers, which is a very well done young adult thriller. Really enjoy that story a lot, and there's like a podcast element to that. So I think it'll be really neat to check this story out as well. And, you know, I enjoy thrillers, and I've had, there have been some, like, not great young adult thrillers I read this year, but there have also been a couple really good ones. So I'm excited to check this one out. I've heard some good things about it. I haven't heard a lot about it, but what I've heard has been good. The other one's The Last Confession of Autumn Casterly, which I just want to say the cover of this, I love this color. Even though the cover itself is kind of plain, I like this. It's my favorite green, actually. This one follows two sisters. We have Ivy and we have Autumn. Ivy is kind of your traditional good girl, geek, sister, and then Autumn, sort of the wild child, does what she wants, kind of rebel girl. Autumn finds herself in trouble, like deep trouble, and she ends up getting kidnapped and hurt. She finds that she can get into contact with her sister Ivy via, I'm guessing, maybe like astral projection, or somehow her mind is able to link with her sister, and the two of them are trying to solve her abduction and trying to rescue her but before it's too late because it looks like whoever has abducted her is probably going to kill her so it's kind of a race against time and it's about sisters and I just think it's gonna be a fun one hopefully a nail biter I always like very intense stories where you can't put the book down and um, I've also not heard a lot about it but what I've heard about it has been good so I think this will be a fun one Next book is The Brief History of the Dead by Kevin Brockmeyer. This book, I swear, has been on my TBR for over 10 years. I think I first heard about this book when I was like a sophomore, junior in high school. I'm 28 now, so that's a long time. Um, but for some reason, I was just never able to pick this book up. It just slipped through my fingers for whatever reason, and I just never ended up picking it up. But I remember to about this book just randomly one day. I'm like, oh yeah, there's this one book that I really want to read because it had this awesome concept. So I put it on hold. And this one, I really want to read this because it's an apocalyptic tale with a twist and I love that. There's this city where after you die, you go to the city and it's populated by people who 
they are still tied to earth by people who remember them. As soon as the last person on earth who remembered you dies, you go away. You just vanish. So one day, the city, the residents of the city wake up and there are only a few residents left. Everybody else has just vanished. So it's the people who are remaining in the town, the city, and there's very few of them, and they're trying to figure out how they are connected, what happened on Earth, why they're the only ones there, and I just think that's such an awesome concept. Brilliant, really, and I'm just hoping, cross my fingers, that there's a good execution because I just think that's awesome and can't wait to dive into this because it just sounds so interesting and just right at my alley. Another book I've had on my TBR for a long time that I want to get to is Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore by Robin Sloan. So this book, well, one, it's, I'm not about to turn off the lights, but the uh, yellow books do glow in the dark, which is cool. This one follows a gentleman who ends up unemployed. He's in the tech industry, and at some point, there's basically the, like the 2008 recession hits, and he loses his job. So he gets a job at this 24-hour bookstore, where nothing is as it seems, and he starts to figure out that something's going on. This bookstore is probably a cover for something else, and he starts digging into the mystery of that. But all I can say is if somebody actually created a 24-hour bookstore, they would have my business because there have been times where I want to buy a book at 4 in the morning, but can't go out and do that. But I think that's a great idea. Looking for a mystery, and I think this will be a good mystery to dive into. Next book is Afterland by Lauren Pukes. This book was a gift from my mom, so shout out to my mom. Thank you so much for getting me this book. I actually hadn't heard of this before she got it for me. It just wasn't on my radar, but I'm really excited to dig into this story. I've read uh, The Shining Girls by this author, and I started Broken Monsters, but it was one of those books I had to return to the library, so I do want to finish Broken Monsters because I was enjoying it. Um, but this book follows a woman named Cole and her 12-year-old son, and they're just trying to navigate a world where most of the men have died off. There's this disease called, I believe, manfall? Yeah, manfall. And pretty much almost all the men died. Boys, men, they're gone for the most part. And so Cole is trying to find a safe haven for her son because she doesn't want him to be like forced into reproductive slavery or a sex toy or you know have somebody steal him from her so she's very protective and she has a crazy sister who's after her and just a lot of people are trying to track Cole and her son down and it's just navigating a new world where it's ruled by women but it's not all kumbaya and utopia at all there's a lot more to it. It's, it has its issues because, you know, it's pretty much an kind of an apocalyptic dystopian society because a, half your population just died. And I'm looking forward to it. I haven't heard anything about it. However, Stephen King has blurbed it. So has, I think, Chuck Wendig? Yeah. Which, Chuck Wendig did Wanderers, so I love that book. And, of course, um, I also really enjoy, in fact, um, Chuck Mundig, who wrote Wanderers, Ben Winters, who wrote Underground Airlines, I really like that, and Stephen King. So there are like a lot of authors on the back of this who are praising this book, so I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a fun read. Next book up is The Good House by Tanana Reeve Du. I am very excited for this book for several different reasons. First of all, it takes place in Washington State. Yay! I always love a good story that takes place in my state and especially a good horror paranormal story. And this one has to do with, I believe it's told in, like there's an event that happens in like the 1920s and then there's stuff happening in present day, which this book came out like in 2003. So the present day is supposed to be like the early 2000s. And it follows our main character. Her son, I believe commits suicide. And she comes back to the good house which was owned by her grandmother I believe and it's kind of focusing on like the family like the generations of this family and their ties to this house and like the occult 
I believe that there's an element of voodoo in this story, which thinks, I think that's really neat, especially I've heard, uh, I haven't heard too much about the story because I don't want to be spoiled, I kind of just want to go into it fairly blind. Like, I know that it's going to be a very character-driven story in a family driven story with paranormal elements, but I don't know too much more beside that. Um, but I think there's supposed to be a positive representation of voodoo and conjure, which I think is going to be awesome because you always see a negative depiction of it. It's always supposed to be super scary, but I actually think that the magic's supposed to be beneficial in this. I don't think that the magic is the villain in the story from what I've gathered anyway. And also, too, it's written by an African-American woman, and I think that is great. So. I can't wait to read this story, and uh, this is my first book by this author. There are several of her books that I've been interested in checking out, but this is the, the first book I'll be reading by her, and can't wait to get to it. Next up is Severance by Ling Ma. This one is supposed to be sort of a satirical, funny take on the zombie apocalypse. I mean, when you... I think this sums it up pretty well. Is it the end of the world or just another day at the office? So pretty much we follow a main character named Candace and the zombie apocalypse happens but basically the zombies aren't running around ripping people's heads off and eating their brains, guts, you name it. They just turn into mindless office drones and just keep working and that's it. So it's going to be a very satirical story poking fun at office life and um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I like any kind of outbreak and apocalyptic type story and I think it'll be fun to read a humorous book and a satirical book. I do enjoy a good satire if it's done well, so um, I can't wait to dive into this one. Alright, there's only a couple more books left. We're getting towards the end, but another book I want to share with you is The Mercy of the Tide by Keith Rawson. This one I haven't heard too much about, but as soon as I read the blurb, I knew I was going to have to pick this up because there are several elements to the story that I think I'm going to really enjoy. This takes place in 1983 along the Oregon coast, which awesome, and it takes place in a small town where there have been several mysterious disappearances and deaths, and it impacts several different people in the community. There's a police officer who's trying to solve the mystery of what's happening, and then there are are several other characters. There's like a daughter, I believe, of one of the characters. Yeah, a nine-year-old deaf girl who's grieving. And there's also a senior in high school, Sam, the brother of the girl. And they lost their mom to what is happening in the town. So there's going to be several different perspectives of this event, trying to solve what's happening and processing through what's going on. And I don't know too much more than that, but I it just sounded really interesting to me, and I, I'm a sucker for 80s stuff, and small towns, and especially things set in the Pacific Northwest, and I've been to the Oregon coast plenty of times, so I just can't wait to read a story that's set along the Oregon coast, so can't wait to get to this one, and also I'm just happy that my library has started carrying a little bit more indie horror. They still don't have a lot, but there have been more indie horror books that have been popping up recently, and that's so awesome. Next book is Confessions by Kanai Minato. Back in April, I ended up reading Penance by this author and enjoyed it quite a bit. However, this is the book that I've been really anticipating by this author. I had put it on hold right before the libraries all shut down um, during lockdown, so I wasn't able to get that at the time. Now I'm finally in my hands, have the holds that I wanted all those months ago, and I'm very excited for it because I've heard this one is the darker one, it's the more twisty one, and I just, I'm really looking forward to it. This one follows a middle school teacher, and she ends up essentially, so there's an accident that happens at the school, and she decides she wants to resign from her post, but right before she does, she ends up getting all of the students in the classroom to start confessing to things and there's like almost like a twisted psychological experiment conducted by her to try to enact revenge on the students. Not sure how many students, if like everybody in the classroom is involved or if it's specifically just a couple, but 
All I know is that there's a revenge aspect to it, there's a lot of twists and turns, it's told in multiple points of view, so I just think it's gonna be really cool, and, you know, I enjoy reading work by Japanese authors, and I love a good revenge story, love a good thriller, and I, I can't wait to get into this one. Okay, we're getting there. Only three more books that I have left to share with you. This next one is Permafrost by Alastair Reynolds, which this is one is actually more of a novella length, like a slightly longer novella or a shorter novel. It's 173 pages, so it's kind of in the middle there. But this one is another apocalyptic tale that also involves time travel. So this story takes place in 2080, where there are a bunch of scientists who are doing research down in the Arctic, and they are figuring out how to make time travel possible and they decide that they need to go back in the past to change one tiny little thing. If they change this one thing, it'll make the future that much better. However, when they go to do that, they mess up and things go wrong and the story is pretty much following what happens with that. It also, so that's the one aspect of the story, but the other part, because it's actually told in a dual timeline, the other part of the story is in 2028 where there is this woman who has, I believe she has a, oh yeah, brain surgery. So she has brain surgery for this condition that she has, and she starts to hear a voice in her head, and she, right away she knows that there's something off, and she's trying to figure out what exactly is happening. The voice is trying to get her to do things, and so she has to decide, does she listen to the voice, or does she resist, and how does this connect with the scientists in 2020, or in uh, 2080. So, I think that's really cool. Combines a lot of different elements that I enjoy in a story, so I'm looking forward to this. Okay, second to last book I want to talk about is Paradise Sky by Joe R. Lansdale. I haven't heard much about this story, but... I've seen a lot of people rate it 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads, so I decided to explore the story because I've always wanted to read a Joe R. Lansdale story, but I actually haven't. Um, I remember checking out the bottoms, but I didn't end up getting to it, so I had to return back to the library, and this was a couple of years ago, so that's still high on my priority list of books to read. But in the meantime, I decided to check out Paradise Sky, which this story is a, it's like a western story that has a revenge element to it. I think it's supposed to be sort of like a dark thriller crime novel where I'm actually just going to read the inside plot because I think it summarizes a little better than I would, but it, it sounds really interesting. Young Willie is on the run, having fled his small Texas farm when an infamous local landowner murdered his father. A man named Loving takes him in and trains him in the fine art of shooting, writing, reading, and gardening. When Loving dies, Willie reconsidents himself, Nat Love, in tribute to his mentor and heads west. In Deadwood, South Dakota Territory, Nat becomes a Buffalo soldier and is befriended by Wild Bill Hickok. After Nat wins a famous shooting match, his peerless marksmanship and charm earn him the nickname Deadwood, Deadwood Dick, as well as the love of a woman. But the Hellhounds are still on his trail, and they brutally attack Nat Love's bride. Pursuing the men who have driven his wife mad, Nat turns south for a final, deadly showdown with those who would strip him of his home, his love, his freedom, and his life. So, looking forward to this. I think it's going to be just a very fun, maybe dark, depending on how the story goes, novel. I think it's going to explore a lot of different themes, especially back to that the main character is African American and kind of struggling in the West. There's a revenge aspect, and I think that it's going to be really fun to and exciting to read about and I don't read a lot of books set in the Wild West but I think this one will probably be a fun one and I've heard really good things about it so can't wait to get into it. And then the last book which I actually checked out the next two books in the series it's a trilogy and I figured better safe than sorry and I want to have all three if, especially if I end up liking the first one that's Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. So it's the first book of The Ancestor, and this one is a fantasy story, and it's part of a trilogy. This one follows a young girl. Originally, she's nine, she accidentally kills somebody, and she's taken in by this group of nuns who basically train to become assassins, and you have to train for many years to become an assassin nun, and 
it, the story goes from there. Like, it sounds like kind of a simple story, but I thought that was really cool. And I'm always looking for a refreshing take on high fantasy and just fantasy in general. And I haven't read anything by Mark Lawrence. I know he's a pretty big fantasy author, but I'm excited to read this trilogy in particular because it just sounded really neat. Like, I'm just picturing, like, these just badass nuns with lots of knives just doing parkour and karate, and I don't know. I just think that sounds really fun. And it's more complicated than that, but um, I think that... It'll be really interesting to read about so can't wait to get into this thank you all so much for watching my video i have all books that i'm planning on trying to get through in august i don't know how far i'm going to get through in my tbr just because i am still trying to find a job so in a way i have a lot more free time but in another way i don't because i kind of have to be ready to interview and you know apply for things, submit my resume, you name it, but I, in the meantime, I'm going to try to get a lot of videos done. I've got a huge backlog of videos that I'm working on, including my San Juan Island trip where I picked up those two books at the beginning, um, so I'm going to be doing that, and then I have some subscriber request videos I'm currently working on editing, so let me know what books you're planning on reading for August. If you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them, or if there are any books that you're interested in reading, let me know, and I... I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, rate, subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later.